This program is designed to assist you in the event an emergency response involves treating a patient using a hardware ventricular assist system. It is designed to be used in conjunction with printed materials and should not be the sole source of training information. The Heartware Ventricular Assist System helps a weakened heart pump blood throughout the body, allowing a patient the freedom to resume a normal lifestyle. Its small size and integrated inflow cannula allow the device to be implanted completely in the pericardial space directly adjacent to the heart, thereby avoiding abdominal surgery. The driveline cable, constructed with fatigue-resistant conductor wires, similar to those used in pacemakers, exits the skin and connects the implanted pump to an externally worn controller. The hardware controller operates the pump and makes sure that it is working correctly. The display on the controller provides you with information about the pump performance that includes the blood flow, the speed, and the amount of power being used. Also on the face of the controller are two additional buttons. The scroll button, which allows you to toggle between information on the controller, and the alarm mute button. The alarm mute button will mute all low and medium priority alarms. There are four connectors on the controller, one driveline connector, two power supply connectors, and one monitor connector, which is also used for the alarm adapter. The silver driveline connector should always have the driveline cover in place. When properly positioned, the driveline connector will not be visible. The controller requires two power sources connected at all times for safety, either two batteries or one battery and either the AC adapter or DC adapter. While active, a patient will typically use two batteries. While relaxing or sleeping, the patient would typically use the AC adapter because it provides power from an electrical outlet for an unlimited period of time. The DC adapter draws power from the electrical outlet in an automobile and may be used when traveling by car. If you respond to a patient using a hardware system, there are some important things you need to take into consideration. This is a continuous flow pump, which means pulses may be difficult to palpate. If you have access to a Doppler, it may be easier to obtain a pulse. Blood pressure may also be difficult to obtain because patients with a continuous flow VAD have a very narrow pulse pressure and may only get a single number. The single number represents a mean arterial pressure, or MAP. A MAP that is too high or too low will affect the flow through the pump. If the pump is not alarming, it is safe to assume that there is circulation. If you are treating a responsive patient, the patient or caregiver can be helpful in the management of the equipment. If there is a problem with the pump, the display on the controller will provide two lines of text. The first line will indicate what the alarm is, and the second line will state what action should be taken. Don't be distracted by the pump. VAD patients can still experience other medical conditions like arrhythmia. If the patient has an arrhythmia, its effect may be different. Patients may be awake and with or without symptoms from ventricular arrhythmias. Depending on your assessment, the VAD patient should be transported to their implanting center or closest hospital. If the patient is unresponsive, as in this case, other assessments can be helpful, especially since pulse and blood pressure may be difficult to obtain. Skin color and temperature, for example, cool and clammy or pink and diaphoretic, give some indications into the patient condition. Follow BLS and ACLS protocol. All medications can be given. The patient can be defibrillated and cardioverted without disconnecting any HVAD system equipment. Chest compressions may pose a risk due to pump location and position of the outflow graft on the aorta, so use clinical judgment when deciding if CPR should be performed. If the patient requires CPR, confirmation of device function should be performed at the hospital. The HVAD pump, if working properly, should be able to circulate blood. If, however, there are alarms or indication from the controller that there is no or little flow through the VAD, a couple of steps should be taken. First, make sure the controller is connected to the drive line that exits the abdomen and that there is adequate power connected to the controller. If this doesn't resolve the alarm and the pump is still not working, continue to follow ACLS protocols. 
To verify pump operation, check the display screen for parameters or alarms. You can also listen over the left chest for pump hum and feel for vibrations of the pump over the lower left chest. If the patient is unresponsive but the pump is pumping, look for other causes such as diabetes or stroke. There are various alarms that provide information about the condition of the pump, controller, connections, and power supplies. Alarm conditions are classified as high, medium, or low. A high priority alarm is displayed with a flashing red warning light and unique sound. A medium priority alarm is displayed with a flashing yellow warning light and unique sound. A low priority alarm is displayed with a solid yellow light and unique sound. The message on the controller screen consists of two lines of text. The first line tells you what the alarm is, and the second line tells you what to do. The alarm sound will stop, and the alarm indicator light will go out when the alarm condition is resolved. Some questions you might have about patient care are, can you give IV fluids? Yes. Can you defibrillate or cardiovert? Yes and you can do so without adjusting the jewels or disconnecting the device. Can you follow BLS and ACLS guidelines? Yes, but remember VAD patients may not have detectable pulse or blood pressure. Can you perform CPR? Yes, if required, but confirm pump function following CPR. Can you immobilize the spine? Yes, but when strapping the patient to the board, be sure the driveline exiting the abdomen and the external equipment is not manipulated or dropped. If you are going to transport a patient, the patient's controller must be powered by two batteries. Don't disconnect both power sources at the same time. Bring all backup equipment with the patient, and patients can be transported via ground or air. Based on the clinical situation, the patient can be transported to the closest hospital or implanting center. If the controller is being powered by an AC adapter, you will need to change power supplies. To disconnect any power connector, as the patient demonstrates, grasp the power cable on the front end of the connector. Turn the connector counterclockwise until it stops. Pull it straight out from the controller. Connect a battery to the controller by grasping the power cable at the back of the connector, leaving the front free to rotate. Line up the solid white arrow on the cable connector with the white dot on the controller. Gently push the cable in. Do not twist the connector, but allow it to naturally lock in place. A good connection will result in an audible click. Confirm that the power cable is properly locked in by gently pulling on the cable near the base of the connector. If another power source is not connected within 20 seconds, the power disconnect message will be displayed on the controller and an alarm will sound. Once a second power source is connected to the controller, the alarm will stop. Each fully charged battery provides about six hours of use for normal activities. When one battery is depleted to 24% capacity, the controller will automatically switch to the other battery. An intermittent beep will sound, the alarm indicator will be yellow, and a message will be displayed on the controller screen to replace the depleted battery. If the battery is not changed within five minutes, the alarm will get louder until the battery is exchanged with a fully charged one. If a depleted battery is not exchanged and there are only a few minutes of battery time remaining in both batteries, a high priority alarm will sound, the alarm indicator will be flashing red, and the message on the controller display will read, critical battery. This means that only a few minutes of power remains before the pump stops. The batteries should be exchanged immediately. A backup controller is included with the hardware system. The backup controller should be kept with the patient at all times, in the unlikely event there is a problem with the original controller. The backup controller will also hold the red alarm adapter. This is for emergency use only and is used to silence the no power alarm when power is removed from a controller that is no longer in use. If a controller needs to be changed, follow these steps as demonstrated by the patient. Connect power to the new controller. Please note that a VAD stopped alarm will start, but it will end once the pump drive line is connected. Restarting the pump is the priority, so don't worry about silencing the alarm until after getting the pump restarted. Next, pull back the white drive line cover on the drive line to expose the silver connector. 
Disconnect the drive line from the original controller by pulling the silver connector away from the controller. Do not disconnect by pulling on the drive line cable. Connect the drive line to the new controller by aligning the two red marks and push together. The pump should restart. Verify the pump is working by checking the controller display for RPM, flow, and watts. Once you have verified that the pump is working, you can silence the VAD stopped alarm by inserting the red alarm adapter into the blue connector on the original controller. Then disconnect the power, silencing the old controller. The red alarm adapter should never be placed in the working controller. If a red alarm adapter is not available, you can silence the no power alarm on the original controller by pressing and holding the alarm mute and scroll buttons at the same time until the beep is heard, or for at least five seconds. Release both buttons, then disconnect the power. The original controller will be turned off and all alarms silenced. On the new controller, slide the white driveline cover over the silver connector. The Heartware Ventricular Assist System is surgically implanted to assist a failing native heart pump blood more efficiently. The Heartware System requires the internal pump to be connected to external electronics, including a controller and power. This pump is a continuous flow pump, so it may be difficult to palpate a pulse or obtain a blood pressure. BLS and ACLS protocols should be followed. Do not be distracted by the device. These patients can experience life-threatening emergencies unrelated to the device. We recommend working with your medical director and the implant center to develop a VAD-related response algorithm. For more information and additional resources, please go to www.heartware.com or contact the closest implanting center.